Well, Xbox decided to give us another look at the Xbox Series X and having games run on it with different influencers and publications. And to say the least, many are not that impressed. Wow. Why the underwhelming Xbox Series X demo leaves a black eye on next gen. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy MM2K back again with another episode of The Medicine. Glad to be back. But before we get into this one, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. <laughs> I appreciate all y'all straight up, y'all know the deal, y'all know the reason, y'all know the slogan, I am not too proud to ask, let's stop playing around, let's get into it, alright, so, here's the story y'all, um, basically, um, Ars Technia, Tom Warner The Verge, Digital Foundry, IGN, publication after publication after publication, got their hands on the Xbox Series X, and they were told to talk about the demos of two launch games, one a third party title, the one um, uh, a timed exclusive uh, at least, um, the third party game is Dirt 5, the timed exclusive is Yakuza, um, and though pe when people played them, even, even though they were, they liked some facets of like the certain modes, particularly the 120 frames per second mode in Dirt 5, as far as a next generational leap, they weren't that impressed. They weren't that impressed. I mean, we've heard Digital Foundry say, oh, I'm impressed with this mode, <laughs> but overall, nobody is enthused, enthused or ecstatic about feeling like they've really been thrusted into next generation per the showcase. And I think that's the big problem here. The big problem here is that we're being told to pay another $500. You gotta pay $500 to experience this new thing coming, right? And which is next generation and Xbox in particular has been, you know, holding the flagpole for yes, if anything, our Xbox Series X console will help you launch pad into the next generation and melt your eyeballs. I mean, if you want to just generally improve and get like better performance with our Xbox Series S, feel free to do that and be able to play the next gen version of games. But if you really want to stratosphere into the, you know, catapult into the next generation, the Xbox Series X is only your, your logical choice as far as consoles. That's how they've marketed this thing, right? And so just like any other previous, you know, console launch, people expect for their eyeballs to be melted. And whenever you showcase feature sets or things that are gonna melt people's eyeballs or drop their jaws, uh, you know, they're expecting you to put something on the table that really, really, really does that job. And the fact of the matter is, is that what Xbox did is they went to these influencers and these publications and they said, hey guys and gals, you guys are gonna have an embargo on you. You're gonna have an embargo on Dirt 5 and an embargo on Yakuza. But once that embargo is lifted, shoot away. And being that you have that dynamic that was put into the whole foray, you're thinking that being that Xbox chose these titles to be the ones that once you lifted the veil up, you're now going to expose this performance to the world. You're expecting again because not only is this next generation, but this is the, uh, <laughs> th th these are the ones that were hand selected by the company themselves for the most powerful console. You're expecting for some melting to happen. So there's no getting away from that. I see a lot of people trying to damage control and say, oh, that's horrible. You're trying to use Dirt 5 as a litmus for the Xbox. No, the Xbox used Dirt 5 as a litmus for the Xbox performance. You can't damage control that, okay? Whether you still have faith in the box or not, Xbox chose that game, all right? So 
Those are the cons of what happened. Now here are the pros. We gotta be fair here. Digital Foundry did say that as far as what it was targeting, the 120 frames per second mode, they enjoyed what was going on, right? They enjoyed what was happening because it was a locked 120 frames for the most part. It would dip down to 90, but because of how fast and smooth things were performing, you could hardly notice it. And they gave you some bibble babble on why you wouldn't notice the dip from 120 to 90 as much as you would a dip beyond from, from 60 frames per second to below. So they were impressed. They were also impressed at the scaling method that was used, even though a lot was sacrificed. You know what I mean? In order to do it. So they were impressed pretty much with how they were able to create and render 120 frames per second, what they were able to do. They were impressed at that. But again, the overall theme is the next, the, the next generation expectations to the average consumer. Nobody has shown or stated anything that has impressed them on that level. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. So even though, and once again, we've had publications say that they were impressed by certain elements, but they overall are not impressed with, um, you know, this big offering that we were supposed to get like a consistent 4K60 with all the bells and whistles and super, super glazed textures that were out there, right? And you're not getting that. Here's something else to consider, guys. So Ars Technia wrote this sublet part of VRR question mark now uh, VRR is a feature set of the Xbox Series X that was supposed to have frame rates be a little bit more stable I'm not the technical guru I'm not gonna try to muck this up and try to explain it but basically it was supposed to you know much more consistently have frames perform at a more consistent locked rate than before than, than we've seen prior so here's their explanation through their testing of all this they said hold on now you might say doesn't Xbox Series X support HDMI 2.1 in its game mode variable refresh rate mode? It's not supposed to reduce the aforementioned frame rate stutters and scale refresh rates between 40 frames per second to 120 frames per second with less visible judders. So in their article, they explain a lot more so than Digital Foundry that they've experienced a lot of judders and stuff, right? And so I definitely urge you to read the Ars Technia article um, on, on Dirt 5 and, and their thoughts on it. They say yes, but unfortunately, Dirt 5 isn't properly operating with Xbox Series X's VRR system as of press time, at least not as connected to my LG CX OLED panel. Update, updated with the new firmware as of last week and Microsoft confirmed that this is a known issue and the console's pre-release testing period. This is, is a significant asterisk that we hope is resolved in the time for the console's November retail launch and we'll keep you posted on that front. So the reason why I wanted to show all of y'all that was there are variable things going on here that people have reported that are issues even though this is like the early build, but this is a close build that you're gonna to get to launch as, as, as you know as you can get next to the final build. There's a possibility that if you get this thing at launch that you're gonna experience some of these issues. I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but it's a high possibility. And the more likelihood that this is, if this does happen when you get it at launch, it is gonna be further more disappointing. So I just wanted to put that out there so people are aware and things are fully transparent. Here is something else that's happening. Let me do this. Let me show you something. Let me see, can you, can you guys hear this? All right, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna play this and get you guys' thoughts on this. And this is some, this is Alana Pearson, I think her name is. Um, she's reviewing the quick resume mode and she's having issues with quick resume. We preview, oh, I do have stage K2 though, we can do this. This one's quick resume because I had already loaded it in as well. Had already played it. Ooh, it crashed. That's unfortunate. Try again. But, you know, I'm not going to edit that out and let you guys see it. Again, it is still preview build. Things are being updated all the time. The console is absolutely not out yet, but definitely worth showing you guys that stuff for sure. That is, uh, 
maybe the third time that something has either done that or there was one time where I tried to load a game and it uh, was just a black screen. So uh, yeah, Let as I've turn off the more music. over the last couple of weeks. Oh, it needs an update. No, well, that's why it happened. <laughs> that makes more sense. Okay, let's do let's do Halo. Actually, I think Halo might not be compatible. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Let's go back here and then go to Halo from here. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I thought so. Um, Halo is not yet backwards compatible. That is a thing that they are constantly updating, which is also strange. Because neither is Gears 5. Seems like two games you would have be compatible, but they aren't just yet. Um, Forza isn't either. We can load up Fable Anniversary. Which I think looks... Oh. There's crashes across the board here. Wow. Well, hey. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> you have crashes across the board. And again, I'm not trying to nitpick and gloat here or whatever, because y'all know my stances on the next generation consoles. Um, for those that don't know my stances for full transparency, I'm not sold on them because of issues like this, because we're seeing things again with the most powerful console where we're being told that things like hdr is going to be a dlc a downloadable patch this is the most powerful console in the world like what are we doing here so because of all this again the aforementioned whole downloadable thing with hdr i don't doubt that this is going to be an issue and this isn't just me saying this or me picking you know ars technia you know you got uh tom warren I've been testing Dirt 5 and Yakuza like a dragon on the Xbox Series X. I don't think either title really shows off anything wild next gen. I'll have a full preview of the Xbox Series X soon though. Then you also got the homie Ryan McCaffrey of IGN Podcast Unlocked. Here comes the Xbox Series X game previews. I played Dirt 5 on the Series X and found a lot of like in game, game like in the gameplay department. Thought I was disappointed with the lack of next gen wow factor, visually speaking. I played Yakuza on Xbox Series X. While it didn't feel very next gen from a technical perspective, um, as someone new to Yakuza, I found it to be a delightfully weird and self-aware jrpg so here's the problem again you are selling the xbox series x as the most powerful console in the world it has to have the element of making your eyeballs melt people are playing games on this thing and their eyeballs aren't melting you as the company said these are the two games that are embargoed we're going to release the embargo these are the games that we want you to talk about and these are underwhelming in the eyeball melting department so then with all that oh sony ain't got this and sony don't do that and sony don't do this being 9.12 and teraflops and it's weak it's weak it's weak the question has to be asked to the average consumer who more likely than not is with PlayStation. Why would I transfer from PlayStation where I know that I'm at least going to like the games that I get? Why would I go and leave there for the extra T-flops if the extra T-flops aren't present in your games, at least at launch? Why would I do that? Why would I not just stick with my PlayStation? And I want to give a big shout out to the homie Optimus Code. Now he says something here. I would play it, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to just steal people's, uh, you know, steal their mantras or, or, or you know, hold on. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm gonna mute it only because I want you guys to go out and listen to what Optimus Code has to say. I'm gonna leave a link to it below. Um, but basically, I'm paraphrasing here. What he's saying is the problem is, is that people put so much emphasis on power when it came to the Xbox Series X. Y'all put so much power on it that you made fun of PlayStation. Now the company itself said these are the games that we want you to highlight to show that power and it's not impressive enough. And now y'all want to backtrack and say, well, those aren't the good games. You don't make this console. Xbox does. We don't want to hear your capping. And the homie Optimus Prime pretty much highlights that. And I, and, and I think that was a very great point for him to make. So again, for those of you that uh, want to see this, I'll leave a link to it below. Now, with all that said, again, 
What is the point of this video? <laughs> How does this leave a black eye on next gen? Well, first and foremost, um, I just want everybody to be aware that from what we've seen, really from both consoles, we won't be seeing real astounding use of these higher refresh rates for a while. Now, even though Digital Foundry said, hey, I'm impressed with this and that and the other, a dynamic 1440p, if you want me to pay an extra $500 for a closed, you know, closed console where it should be easier to hit these, these targets, because again, you're not like a PC, you ain't gotta worry about this and that and all that other stuff. You're specifically designed to play games. So that's why you can do stuff like this at a lot cheaper price than a PC, because you're only focused on the game aspect, right? The hardware is only being used for that, right? And that's generally, it's a closed, um, you know, it's a closed system, general, and that's generally why you can do these things at, you know, cheaper uh, needs than, than a PC. That being said, that being said, um, a dynamic 1440p 120 frames per second ain't doing it. It's not doing it, I'm sorry. On a 1070, right now, you people are comparing the Xbox to 2070 cards or 2060s or whatever the case may be, right? On a 1070, I was playing games at high, you know, at, 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 at high textures, 14, I mean, not dynamic, native 1400p, 120 frames per second. With, again, with a 1070 card, I could get my game up to 120 frames per second at high settings. I was doing that two years ago, or a little bit, you know, prior to that. Two years ago. Now, you want me to pay an extra $500 for this new quote unquote technology that at launch can't give me 1440p native at 120 frames per second flat? You gotta take away everything graphically impressive and it looks like it's like medium to low settings. You gotta take away anything graphically impressive in order to get it running at 120 frames per second. Now I get that there are people that play competitively that don't mind 1080p 120 frames per second. Okay, I get that. That play like competitively for first person shoot, but they still get some decent resolution. Like they're playing on high, 1080p high, 120 frames per second. Maybe this Xbox Series X can do that. Maybe that's what they should have targeted instead of trying to go for 1440p at the moment. But again, this is the most powerful console. It's supposed to be full of technology that is well beyond what we were seeing in some PC elements a few years ago. This, These results, even though they're cool, they're not impressive, and to a lot of people, they're not going to warrant an additional $500 investment. And it also showcases why native resolution reliance is a bust. It's a bust. If what if you if in order for you to get high settings for a 1440p, make it a dynamic 1440p that scales up from 1080 and put in the better textures. And work on that AI and that machine learning to get it up. And that's this. I'm gonna close out with this, y'all, because I've been bloviating for a long time. This is why I am putting all my chips, well, most of my chips for the most part, in cloud gaming, period. Because again, I'm not gonna get my head beat with a cash register. You are not gonna make me pay, again, pay $500 for a scaled 1440p that's like at low, low medium texture, no, no, low medium settings, hell to the no, hell to the no, no. <laughs> Y'all must be crazy out here. And that's why this right here, the most powerful console, the one that was getting all the buzz after Bethesda was bought. This is why these end results, even though in some areas are impressive, they are a, a black eye to next gen. 
I'm all in on cloud gaming until I start seeing something impressive from the consoles. You know what I mean? Now I am I'm picking up a PlayStation 5, not because it is teraflop bibblewop bull crap. It's because I want to play Godfall on the next PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? And that for me was enough for a system seller. The content is what's going to sell these for the most part. And you got to have content exclusive to it that's going to make people want to buy. And that's what's going to really make them fly off the shelves for everybody. The first batches will fly. That's always going to be the case. They're going to be sold out everywhere. But I'm talking about them subsequent batches. It's looking very spooky for them. And particularly the most powerful console, unless they step their game up and put something in people's hands that either show why this is going to melt their face all the way around. I want something graphically impressive, even at 120 frames per second. I should be getting 1440p native. Or if I can't get 1440p native and it look graphically impressive, then I should be getting 1080p upscale to 1440p with high textures, high settings, nothing less, period. Most powerful console, it equates to graphically uh, eyeball melting fidelity, period. And I said from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies. PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with all that said, you have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. And you know the saying, don't get your head beat with a cash register. Peace.